episode three. Hey what, guys. How are you? Um, we are going to start with an actual request from an actual customer who's been watching this and enjoying this uh, uh, video. And uh, she is asking, gentlemen, when you're here on a date, and this is a perfect date spot, please don't sit like this. Turn to your companion, not all the way, 45 degrees, okay? So you can actually somewhat face each other when you're sitting at the bar. So uh, we, we're gonna practice. When you come back here on a date, we're going to practice sitting and somewhat facing each other. And speaking of this being a perfect date spot, uh, Valentine's Day is coming. And we, as you know, we have a very limited seating. Please make your reservations early. And don't forget to order oysters. Yes. All right, okay. wine. We're talking about Pinot Noir tonight. We're talking about a simple Pinot Noir. I'm gonna have to, I can't talk about Pinot Noir without mentioning a certain movie sideways that basically introduced the grape to general public that did the serious damage, really serious damage to Merlot grape. Are we uh, doing another episode of Merlot? Um, we will. I'm eventually. not doing it. Okay. No. If we do Merlot, you're out of here? I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Uh, yep. Okay. This is over. Okay. So, um, because of that particular movie, Pinot Noir, uh, that was always available to wine drinkers, became something that I call the supermarket wine, although in the state of New York you can't buy wine in the supermarket, but in most of the country you can. And usually the wine that is sold in supermarkets is different from a lot of, from the quality of the wines sold in the wine shops. So from boutique wine shop uh, grape, Pinot Noir became something very simple. And at the beginning it was terrible because basically every large um, winery, um, in reality a factory that makes wine, started just putting the word Pinot Noir on anything, on any blend. But we don't work with that. We only we work don't, with we don't. actual the reason, wineries. The reason I'm using, I'm using this example, that the whole movement of simpler, cheaper Pinot Noirs produced the four Pinot Noirs that we're gonna be showing you. None of them are expensive, none of them will win uh, serious medals, although I believe mm -hmm. one of them does have a serious medal on it or not. Can we start with that? Yeah. All right, um, so let's do that. Okay, so this is... Because I want to taste something. This is Pinot Noir from Central Coast. Um, again, we're not selling or advertising, so if you recognize the label, um, after you see our reaction, either buy it or don't buy it. Can we talk about why it's so light in color? Well, okay, so just a real quick note. Last time we talked about, uh, not last time, in our first one, we talked about the grapes being, uh, uh, in most of the major languages, uh, called black and white. I forgot to mention that actually uh, there is yet another category that I forgot about. There is also uh, grapes that are called gray, which is grigio in Italian and gri in French. So the, that's not a good your, name for that's your Pinot Grigio. For a Just a little low footnote. Great one. Um, so, and actually, American manufacturers in Oregon tried to rename it instead of Pinot Gris, which is traditionally they call it in the French name. They tried calling it Pinot Gray. It was a great failure. Nobody okay. would buy it. Coffee. Okay. So why is it light? Because Pinot Noir is one of the uh, lightest red grapes. If you don't use a lot of skin and it doesn't grow somewhere um, in a very hot climate, it usually is light. So this is from Central Coast, California, which is not that warm, which is clo closer to San Francisco. So it's already like a, like a cooler climate. That's why it's light. Okay. Uh, a little bit of vanilla. Coffee. Uh, definitely coffee, a very strong, uh, strong whiff of coffee. This will go great with like something goat cheese, um, a salad. You know, we recently tried somewhere a goat cheese um, fritters. Oh yeah. I think that would be really with good. With truffle honey. With truffle honey. Okay, so if you're in a mood to make goat cheese fritters with truffle honey today, you should pick up a bottle from us. Okay. This is, and if you're not, 
Um, I can't remember the name of the place. Just call us, we'll tell you where to go. All right, next one. Okay, so we're moving um, north along the same coast. And this is Pinot Noir from Oregon. Now, normally... Oregon, the birthplace of vegan muffins and great Pinot Noir. Now, normally, Pinot Noir from Oregon is usually very expensive. Uh, fantastic. Completely not different easy, notes. Not easy to find. Now, this is a, a very good producer. We actually carry two wines from them. The Pinot Noir from Oregon and Cabernet Sauvignon from Washington State. The same producer, two, uh, two brothers team. Um, and this is similar to those big, um, expensive, fruit-forward uh, Pinot Noirs of Oregon and Washington State. But this is very, very much moderate, very moderately priced. Very, I would say, very democratic wine. Can we just leave the politics out of the podcast? No, <laughs> not democratic <laughs> in terms of a, just, of just, a party. <laughs> we're not going to talk politics. I think people have had enough of that. Okay. This is fantastic. Um, and it really, if you taste them back to back, you can tell how one coast can produce a completely different drink. So just a few hundred miles makes a huge difference. Now, real quick, not to take a lot of time, we have another Pinot Noir that we were actually not planning to taste today. It's also from Oregon, so we're just gonna quickly uh, taste it. It came in a it's can. It's in a can? So, this team. Wait. No, no fizzle, but. So, we it's were in a can. fighting, we were fighting um, ever bringing wine in a can in this place for. I'm gonna almost swirl it and pretend years. it's an actual wine. Um, our 11th anniversary is coming in a couple of weeks, uh, but uh, we had something here that we're doing and it did for three years straight, something that we call the Hunky Tonk Christmas. And what, how would you possibly do that without wine in the can? Wine in the can. You first. It's very decent. Um, Drinkable. It's a little too cold because it's from the fridge. Because we keep the wine in the can in the fridge. Part in the, the phone. It's okay. This is a business. Um, I'm gonna give this back to you. Um, it's an okay nose, but um, I'm finding it completely dead on arrival. Flat finish. Um, so if you're in a store and you see wine in a can, keep walking. Well, please. not really. I've tried. It. There is a there is a very decent. Um, the whites are actually working. This person will not stop. Can we can we pull this? It's probably my mom. Okay, we're back. We're back. It was not mom. Mom, I'll call you as soon as this is over. All right, next one. Okay. Um, I want to say something else about the the wine and the can. Yes, I was in the middle of that. Some whites are really work out. Now, the next Pinot Noir. Wait, Prosecco in the can. Prosecco in the can. There is this Long Island winery that yes. has fantastic yep. Prosecco yep. in the yep. can. We're not gonna... And I just said that. Yep. And you know what? Because uh, we have a great relationship with the distributor that works with them, who is one of. Uh, couple of very important wines that we have on the menu come from them. We're definitely going to plug them in. It's called Leap Cellars. Great, great uh, Prosecco in the can. G goes great with the oysters. Okay. Uh, now, we're moving to uh, a Pinot Noir from the region that you normally don't expect to have Pinot Noirs, which is Chile. Now, I could talk about Chilean wines and Chilean wine industry for hours, and we have basically 30 seconds left. So, um, one thing about Chilean wines, they're usually very simple, um, very affordable, and um, very reliable. You get a case of Chilean wine, every bottle's gonna taste the same. This is a lovely acidic berry finish, and this would absolutely go great with lighter meats, uh, maybe a chicken kebab. Um, Thai food. Thai food, Thai food. I, have, yeah. I have a crazy craving for for drunken, uh, drunken noodles right now. Absolutely, anything Asian spice would grow, go great with this. This is the wine to go with, um, we have 
Now, all these wines we have available. Last uh, week, we shot ourselves in the foot because we didn't check our availability of the New Mexican Champagne. And because we plugged it in, when people people came in and finished whatever we had left uh, within the same evening. But we'll order more. This is absolutely uh, my favorite out of the four. Not that I'm comparing, um, but my again, favorite, my favorite. I'm so, uh, sorry, is Christopher Michael. If you are in a store, and th there is a reason why we're not trying New Zealand wine now, uh, New Zealand Pinot Noir, is because by now people think that Pinot Noir is an indigenous grape to New Zealand. It isn't, uh, but New Zealand definitely has a huge following some for of the their best. Pinot Noir, some of the best. So if you are in a store and you don't know which bottle to pick, go with New Zealand. If you're here, try Chilean, uh, try um, Vegan Muffin, Oregon, uh, try Californian, uh, or try all three and see which one you like best. Okay guys, until next week, cheers.